Cheers, guys. Epix911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for August 31st in uh, another packed virtual reality day uh, in terms of news. So let's just jump right into it. Start with the preamble. So I'm going to take some time off next week, uh, four days in addition to our Monday stat holiday. Not a traveling vacation, but a staycation so I can work off my wife's list, my list of things that I still want to do in the man cave here, and our list, the channel list for games to try, games to you know do videos on, stuff that I want to do, etc. So my objective is to get through the damn list next week. And you know, it just boils down to time. Um, it's the reason there wasn't an onward video yesterday. I hope to get one to today is, uh, you know, after I did the news video, watching with my wife, uh, American Civil War, finishing that off, uh, Avengers, I mean, and, you know, just made the, made the choice that, look, Damage Core, I could finish realistically. Um, onward, I still wanted to finish the tutorial, which I still haven't done. I'm going to do that after this before I feel comfortable about jumping in. But uh, that, that's the objective for next week. So now the um, other thing is uh, questions that I've been asked. So it's quite a few uh, with regards to damage core. So let's get into a couple of those questions uh, where it was just a one-off question. I pretty much answered you guys directly, but for the multiple ones, let's start off with the first one, asking if my neck hurt uh, playing. And no, it did not. Uh, I thought it may. But then I honestly, I forgot about it during the game. And when I was reminded again by somebody this morning in the comments, you know, I realized, yeah, no, I'm not waking up with any kind of neck pain or anything. So the answer to that is uh, no, at least for me. If it gets more frantic, possibly, but the game seems very intuitive and paced. It's nicely paced. You're not jerking your head back and forth like crazy. There are times you're moving it quickly, no doubt. But you're not spazzing your head about, you know, uh, second after second, right? So yeah, no, to answer that question. Uh, and then the kind of mixed in with that was how was head targeting because it uses, you know, your head for targeting, right? And uh, same thing, intuitive, paced well. Personally, I didn't have a problem with it. Long term, not sure. We'll find out and I'll let you know. And then the, uh, the last multi-question had to do with uh, the multiplayer, if there were a lot of people playing it or were the servers very empty. And uh, no, they were packed. So there were tons of eight, uh, eight out of eight games, a lot of uh, one to seven out of eight, you know, games that hadn't started yet or had people drop that you could join. And then the ability to host your own, of course, right? So at least, and that kind of makes sense, is day one. Let's hope it holds, right? But so far, yeah, no, no issue with multiplay. And uh, yeah, that, that's, basically, that's basically that. So uh, it's definitely a game that I'm going to play more. Because yeah, the other questions, obviously, you know, did I like it? Very much so. And I'm going to go back to it. But want to do some time with Onward and that first, probably on my Friday gaming night when the holiday starts, that's when I'll get a lot of that playtime in, that extra stuff, and go back and revisit some of those. So there's a, a game I talked about from Sony called Rigs, and it's the mech game. Well, this is kind of similar to what we were just talking about. That's why I opted to talk about it here in this segment. And that is that it's not just multiplayer. So in the trailers, that's what they seem to emphasize, right? But it will, in fact, have a campaign mode. So there's a single player element. And I love that, right? Um, I like multiplayer games, but I got to be in the mood. Sometimes I just want to do my own thing, right? So having a choice, having a campaign mode, terrific. I think that's great. Now, the there's a, another game out called Detached. And that was also launched today. I've had a few people uh, ask me about that game. It's basically, it looks like a drift. I haven't tried it yet, but I probably will. And it's survival, survival adrift style, right? But um, yeah, it's also early access. It uses a jet pack. Uh, I'll find out. It's apparently it's smooth movement. If I guess I'm a pretty bad candidate for that because I don't get the nausea, but I can at least confirm what the movement is like, right? From what I've seen, is it's a little tricky to navigate with the jetpack. To me, that's okay because it's supposed to simulate zero G and that should be a little difficult at first, right? As you're learning to navigate. So 
that's been added to the list. Now, there's been some research showing that uh, from Google that the use of the term VR is up 400% this year over last year. Uh, and I think that's kind of probably in the ballpark of what I would have expected, right? Because, of course, we had all the... Uh, the hype last year, right? Before launch, a lot of that was building, building, building. And then with these actually out to have 400% increase, I'd say that's that's a healthy statistic. There's not much more you could glean off that, really, uh, unless you knew how they were coming up with the numbers, right? That's always the thing with statistics. You got to take them with a grain of salt. But uh, you can take away that in general from that piece is that, as to be expected, use of the term is up because it would be a bad thing if it actually went down right so it's just kind of our collective way of knowing yeah we're still going in the right direction we're not driving backwards yet now the um, next article was really interesting and it's uh, a bulgarian company named quark vr they were former uh, formerly in into game i believe is what their name was intu like a play of into game um I can see why they changed the name. That's actually pretty bad now that I've said it a couple of times. But what they're doing is they're developing an SDK and a little wireless transceiver type device that is going to basically allow you to do positional tracking on stuff like the, you know, Gear VR, but also hopefully with the Vive uh, to and Rift potentially to operate wirelessly. So. A lot of companies are assisting them with that. How viable is that with today's technology? I don't know, but it's definitely one to uh, to keep a track on. Um, for sure, I think the positional tracking could work because I think it was two days ago I did a story. The guy did it for 15 bucks. If he can do it for 15 bucks to get hand tracking, I'm sure it's doable uh, within a decent time frame. So, uh, yeah, and how it's going to do that is it's supporting basically the Steam SDK as well, utilizing that. So it's going to be able to deploy and use that software for the tracking component. Now HTC's at it again. They've uh, spent some more money or invested some more money, I guess would be the more accurate term, by purchasing a VR company this time. So they spent $5 million and the startup is called Steel Wool Studios. They did a game that uh, I actually missed during launch, and it was called uh, Quar, Q-U-A-R colon Battle for Gate 18. And it was basically a turn-based strategic game that uh, has uh, a society, right, or a, a species of alien that has about the technology level of our planet in World War I and they are warmongering and they're fighting all over the planet. So, I mean, it sounds kind of interesting. I'm gonna check into it now because I definitely missed that uh, during launch. Second title, the one that they're working on right now involves Mars, the red planet, and uh, a VR on its surface. So that looks interesting. And, you know, with, with them being in other areas, you know, they're fairly diverse, uh, it's still, comforting that they're investing this much into virtual reality and not just throwing all their eggs in the HMD basket. They're spreading it around into different areas of VR. You know, if it continues kind of unabated, yeah, I suppose we could get into the, oh my God, they're like overextending, overreaching, over acquiring, you know, acquisitions out of control. But so far, I think it's been fairly measured, right? Fairly calm and manageable. But We'll see, we'll just keep tracking that moving forward. But right now, as a Vive owner, it makes me feel comfortable that, look, they're diversifying a little bit, but a lot of that is happening within virtual reality. So, within the market of it anyways, right? Next one was a bit eerie, and it has to do with, it's not a taboo discussion topic, but it is, something that some people just aren't comfortable talking about, uh, especially in kind of Western society. And it's the concept of death, euthanasia. And like I said, it's not a political channel. I'm not going to get into the what I think of that or, or this and that of it. I just wanted to 
mention the story and relay what they are trying to communicate. So they is director Avril Furness and at a uh, conference in uh, Amsterdam, they are basically showing a 360 degree short film and it's a dying husband, he's on his deathbed, wife with him, she's very distraught and it's kind of the final moments, right? final minutes of his life. So that's a pretty damn heavy, somber topic. So links below if it's something you want to explore a little bit more. I'll kind of shut up there because I don't want to, you know, depress anybody or or kind of make it all gloomy. But um, hey, the reality is we were born and the reality is we will die at some point, right? All of us. Like, it's just when is the question. Thinking about that, yeah, some people, and understandably, they're just not comfortable with it, right? Uh, even though it is a reality. Next news story has to do with Apple computers. And, you know, for as, as savvy as Apple can be, there's always deficiencies still, right? And that's with any company. So even when they were riding the, the crest of, you know, being one of the top companies in the world, you, couldn't, you could point to them in other areas and say, wow, they're not even close to being a market leader, right? The big glaring omission for all their desktops, laptops, was gaming. Gaming completely absent, uh, you know, in terms, well, there's few exceptions, right? You're either putting your PCs or your Mac into, you know, a multi-boot type mode, loading up Windows, playing one of the fewer games actually ported or created for the Mac, you just don't have the choice is what I'm getting at, right? So, and that's in, in other areas as well. They filed a patent just recently and it shows what looks like a pair of glasses, HMD style. We've seen it on a couple of other ones. There was a story that I did about a Kickstarter. Uh, pretty sure my BS radar went off with that one. A lot of times what these companies do, like Apple, most of you probably know that already, is just cover your basis, right? Create patents for anything you talk about, work on, to either avoid or initiate future lawsuits, right? And it's the old uh, CYOA, right? Cover your own ass. <laughs> um, as opposed to they're actively going to develop it because you could take any company, look at their patents, and their stuff that's never gonna see the light of day, but it always may. So this VR device type thing, who knows what the purpose of that is, probably one of the points I just mentioned, but if it is VR related, that would be cool. Um, how do you guys feel about Apple joining that? Would that be a bad thing? Would that be a good thing? I'm kind of undecided on that. I've had Apple products as an IT guy. Obviously, I'm PC centric because that's what I use at work. Uh, that's where the business software that I need to run can run on. And uh, gaming is my hobby and PC is best for that, right? So yeah, just curious, curious what you guys think about Apple and VR. Is it a niche they need to get into? Last news story deals with yet another <laughs> VR locomotion device. This one looking a lot like the Omni Virtuix device, right? Which is that larger treadmill device. This one is ROVR or Rover, you know, um, as a pronunciation. And it basically looks like the Omni, except a more aesthetic streamlined version, right? It looks like it weighs a lot less. And apparently that's what the company said that it does weigh less. It is rounded by design more than the square columns that the Omni uses. And just in terms of how they're handling it, right? You're not strapped in for starters. You are wearing your shoes, but putting a tracking collar over top. So it sounds like they've got a much more kind of refined, uh, elaborate approach to it, right? How successful are these guys truly going to be, right? And I've said that on videos as well, that look, we got to keep innovating. VR has to keep innovating. We need them to be actively pursuing this stuff. But does it make the most sense to come to market now, right? Well, a lot of these companies won't have a choice because, you know, they've been banking all that R&D. They need to see some kind of return on that. 
but that's always the concern. If it doesn't launch with a peripheral, how compatible is the device going to be, right? Are devs going to want to write for it if there's so little critical mass, right? And support out there for the device. So my feeling is that these types of devices are going to figure more into the next generation of VR as opposed to this one. But, uh, you know, depending on how they handle it, maybe it doesn't even have to be written directly. And that kind of seems to be the approach that they're taking. They're leaving enough open-endedness in the SDK that it should be fairly easy, depending on the style of game, for people to mod the option in, or even the devs to patch the option of the rover into the game. But we'll see. That will be... A question that for sure will get answered like with most of the questions we ask about VR simply by waiting and reevaluating in a year two three years by seeing who the hell's still left standing right and what condition are they in so there you have it guys it is off to games for me uh, onward and uh, raw data so as always guys cheers and definitely definitely catch you on the flip side